Hi. Most of us want to make the world better, uh, either for ourselves or for our children or for our grandchildren. So in this video, I'm going to spend a few minutes on showing how you can make the world better. Uh, there may be many other ways. I'm sure of all, all of us are trying uh, to do whatever we can. Uh, but uh, this, the way that I'm suggesting may be something which is very practical and you may find this interesting. So let me start by just laying out what we're gonna be talking about. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, so I'm gonna be talking about how you can join a CCDI Slack group. Now CCDI stands for Clayton Christensen Disruptive Innovation Slack group. So Clayton Christensen was the father of disruptive innovation in a way, and uh, he just passed away, uh, uh, I think in 2020. Uh, so in some ways, this uh, group uh, is in his memory and uh, it's going to be, uh, so it basically the hypothesis is that we need to think things differently uh, and disruptive innovation can help us do that. Uh, and imagine a much better world which we can make happen. So if you do join the Slack group and we'll talk about how you can, uh, then you will give to the group and take from the group. But this is not about money. You will not be giving money or taking money or whatever. This is going to be about the sharing of ideas and helping each other to collaborate. Um, and just with uh, ideas and things uh, like that, uh, so if I have an apple, if I have two apples and I give you one, then I have just one apple. But if I have two ideas and I give you one, I still have two ideas. Uh, so uh, this whole idea of give and take uh, works a lot better with uh, ideas. Now here, I just want to start by uh, talking about me and the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, what uh, about the CCDI website, uh, what this MBSM Travelers is, that's make billions by serving millions. Uh, then I have an outline of how uh, a consulting companies uh, or academic institutions acting as consulting companies uh, could become bridges between uh, the government and entrepreneurs. Uh, so I'm going to outline that in Mission 25 Delhi. Uh, now Delhi could be replaced by any geography in the world. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about an India for Prosperity movement. And the whole uh, theme or ethos behind this whole thing is that we want to blame no one, but inspire everyone. Uh, because giving blame is useless. Uh, right, it is so much water under the bridge uh, and it doesn't help anyone. So with that, uh, let me start with uh, a little bit about me and the Bhagavad Gita. So I have been very fortunate uh, to have reached a level of prosperity. I'm now 63 and I'm based in New Delhi, India, though I'm a US citizen. Uh, and um, so whether you look at contentment, uh, you look at health, or you look at wealth, uh, you know, at, at least at this point, touch wood, I have a fair amount of each of these. Um, so uh, for me, uh, what I've realized is that the only way for me to grow my prosperity even further is if the prosperity of others around me grows. So I want to do my little bit to try and help uh, this uh, process uh, take four. Now, where does the Bhagavad Gita come in? So the Bhagavad Gita uh, is a philosophical book. It's not a religious book. So uh, basically the philosophy, one of the things which struck me, and it will talk to different people in different ways. But one of the things that struck me was uh, that, you know, if you uh, are not about ego, it's not about yourself and you realize that uh, whatever happens, uh, it's all because of Prakriti or nature, and uh, you are just uh, an instrument, uh, you are not the doer, or even this whole collection of us in the Slack group, 
we are not going to be the doers. Uh, we are just going to go along with nature and help nature uh, make a better world. Uh, so this doesn't mean that we don't have to put in efforts and we can just depend on nature. We have to put in the maximum efforts, you know, as much as we can, uh, but do that without worrying about the outcomes. Uh, and we, if our efforts are sincere, the outcomes will take care of themselves. So with that, let me move on to the uh, CCDI website. Uh, so, uh, so this is the website. Uh, it has a handle ccdi.carrd.co. Uh, it's been designed by uh, a young person called, uh, who helped me do this, Abdhut. Um, so it talks about the Clayton Christensen Disruptive Innovation Awards which are awards that I would give to people who uh, uh, have reached a certain stage of building, say, a company which uh, could make billions uh, by serving millions. So that's about the awards. But what's more interesting than just the awards are that this website has a bunch of uh, resources. So I'll just click on that. Uh, and uh, so there are some books like the platform revolution, this concept of give and take, uh, a book called the starfish and the spider and the Bitcoin standard uh, by, uh, so, so some of these books are very interesting and I found these uh, quite useful in thinking about how to make the world better. Uh, you may also find that. Then there is this whole video series, uh, which is on how to start a startup. And uh, it's followed by, you know, Blitzscaling, uh, which is another video series of uh, which could be very helpful. And then there's just a two minute video, which is like uh, government as an enabler and not a doer. Um, there's a uh, YouTube series on the PayPal story, which some of you might find interesting uh, and how it relates to disruptive innovation. Uh, there is a, uh, I had started a newsletter and this was the first uh, newsletter which talked about how we could end poverty, not just uh, alleviate it. Um, so this was just to kind of seed some ideas uh, which entrepreneurs could work on. And finally, this Mission Delhi 25, uh, we will talk about that uh, in some detail. So let me move on um, uh, to uh, also show you another uh, thing here, which is uh, the Slack group. So uh, to join the Slack group, you have to do this course, which is Entrepreneurship in Emerging Economies. Uh, so this is a little bit about the course. Uh, you can see that it uh, requires about three to five hours per week and it takes six weeks. So it's basically saying it takes 18 to 30 hours. So that's not a whole lot of time. And you can add a verified certificate for 14,716 rupees, uh, which is a little less than um, $200, 200 US dollars. So again, it's not a lot of money to get a credential from Harvard, though it's Harvard X and it's an online credential, but take it from me, this course is fantastic. If you are somebody who wants to make the world better and you uh, like to learn from stories and cases, uh, you will find this course fascinating. Um, and uh, if you're like me, then, um, you know, I actually finished the course in three or four days because I just binged on it. I liked it so much and I couldn't wait for the next uh, uh, learning opportunity. Uh, so this is the course which you need to do uh, to be able to join the Slack group and you have to do it on the verified track. Now, um, so let me uh, move on to this other uh, thing which uh, one can reach from here. So if you click the join the Slack group, uh, you know, it'll talk about, uh, are you also an MBSM traveler? So I see this make billions serve millions as a journey. And uh, we are all travelers along this journey. I might sort of be the moderator for a little while, 
but I hope a lot of youth join on this journey and maybe in a year's time, uh, they elect a moderator and I can just be a fellow traveler. So, uh, so it talks a little bit about this note. It's not very long. I would encourage you to read it, but it covers why should a person join, who should join. Now the who should join is very interesting. So uh, the youth, I'm saying, I hope 90% of the people who are uh, travelers, MBSM travelers, uh, are youth. Now, there are very few people who will be the entrepreneurs who make these make billions of million companies. But there will be a lot of people who can join these companies. There are a lot of people who can help these companies by advocating their products, testing their products, giving them suggestions, uh, making their path easier, uh, so, uh, so that is, uh, so you have the youths, then billionaires and millionaires, all right, who want to make the world better. So one of the things why I'm insisting on this course is that whatever you've done in the past, if you're not humble enough to say that I can learn, uh, and I can continually learn, uh, then you're probably not a good person to join this group. So by doing this course, the good part is that there is a certain amount of uh, humility that you're showing that, yes, I can learn and I'm ready to do this course. Uh, the second thing is that what I have found is that uh, when you are in a group, if all the people have a common language, uh, then it is very easy to communicate. But otherwise, you're going all over the place. So to me, this course uh, helps us build a common language. So for instance, if you've done this course and I use the word institutional void, uh, you will understand what an institutional void is. Or if I say, hey, uh, Amul did this or Dia Dia in Venezuela did this, uh, it's all gonna be uh, something which uh, we have a common language and then we can build upon that uh, to make a difference. So, uh, to be the people who do this course and they could be anywhere in the world. Uh, they are going to show a degree of humility, a love of lifelong learning. They're going to show that they're willing to invest time a little bit and uh, they're willing to um, uh, invest a little bit of money. So it's just like if you want to improve your golf game, uh, you take lessons, uh, you hit a lot of balls, uh, and maybe you buy a good set of clubs. So if you want to make the world better, uh, then this is basically the equivalent of uh, getting ready. Like if you're going on a hike, these are your hiking boots. So you could now you could also be a CEO uh, of a company, and it, this could be a very large company or it could be a small company. Uh, now in the case of uh, Citibank, for instance, uh, they miss the opportunity for doing the disruptive innovation that PayPal ended up doing. And today, PayPal is a $300 billion company. Uh, Citibank is a $120 billion company. So uh, you have all these kind of things which are uh, there. And so disruptive innovation is very important for a lot of people. Similarly, you can be uh, an activist, a storyteller, an academic, an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, a bureaucrat, regulators, judiciary, politicians, investors, media, evangelists, you know, anyone, if you want to make the world better, please do consider uh, joining this, uh, doing this course and joining, okay, uh, the Slack group. Okay, uh, so also, it's, uh, there is a question of what will this group do? Right. So uh, uh, I will. So one of the things is that once this group uh, gets formed, gets a little bit of critical mass, uh, then uh, what it will do will probably evolve. But some of the I just want to share a few thoughts of what it could do as a starting point. Now, these may change. So let me move on to this uh, thing of uh, Mission Delhi 25. So this is not something that the government of Delhi has done, uh, but it is something that I think that they should do. 
so what I'm trying to say is that by 2025, can Delhi grow its uh, GDP uh, to 100 billion, have jobs for all, and provide an acceptable urban environment to its residents? Okay. And so they could launch this uh, Mission Delhi 25. Now, uh, this would be by creating a project management unit or PMU in the chief minister's office. So this PMU would not be run by bureaucrats, uh, but it would be run by consultants who have won a bit. And these may be a, a consulting firm, which may even set up a special purpose vehicle for this, or it could be part of the consulting firm. It could be an academic institution like IMM Ahmedabad, uh, which could uh, win the bid and set up a special purpose vehicle and then have uh, its faculty, its students, its alumni and uh, people who have been specially recruited for this by the special purpose vehicle uh, to uh, be this bridge between the chief minister's office and entrepreneurs and things like that who want to make billions by serving millions and solve a lot of problems uh, for the city of Delhi, right? So uh, now this is not something which is totally new. Uh, Uttar Pradesh, uh, which is the largest state in India, is trying something like this. I just heard some newspaper reports. I'm trying to find out more. But this note has a little bit of a structure uh, which could be improved upon as to how will this thing be successful. So what it says is that the PME will be run by the winning bidder. And uh, this thing really wants to get large outcomes with low or negative use of public money. Now, in India, this has been done in telecom. So a huge amount of telecom infrastructure has been done. People have had, uh, you know, mobile phones and things like that. Uh, uh, and uh, the government has not spent on this. In fact, the government has made money through revenue sharing, taxes, and so on. So, forth. so <laughs> Delhi has several advantages which uh, it can use to attract solution providers. So one, it has got visibility as the capital of the largest democracy in the world. And having been part of uh, uh, PayPal, I also understand that uh, one of the biggest problems for entrepreneurs who want to change the world by making billions, by serving millions, uh, is not capital. Because if they have an idea of attracting capital is pretty easy. Uh, getting a team also is quite easy. The, toughest problem is to get critical mass. And that is something that the city of Delhi can offer because it's extremely dense. And even if there were three companies that they licensed for some particular outcome that they wanted, each of these three companies could get critical mass by using Delhi as a lab. Now, this may be true in other geographies as well, uh, but Delhi is an interesting uh, geography. Uh, so if the city of Delhi had no desire to own the IP of the solution, and it took, say, 1% of the founder's equity uh, to because it's acting as an enabler, and then, you know, in each of these things, like if you were trying to make uh, air pollution uh, in uh, Delhi better, uh, so there may be mobility solutions, there may be construction solutions, there may be solutions from states uh, which are adjoining, like stubble burning and all that. But if there were two or three firms which said, okay, you know, we are going to uh, take different parts of Delhi, like one third of Delhi, and we are going to concentrate on making air solution, uh, air pollution better, uh, and uh, maybe make it broader, saying we are going to have a improve the urban environment, you know, that so that city uh, Delhi becomes a great place to visit. Uh, so we're going to do all that. Uh, and we want to get licensed, we bring in a lot of capital, maybe we'll do all the waste management, etc. Uh, uh, so then there would be a dialogue between this consulting firm and companies which want to bid and the government saying, uh, and the government, by government, I mean bureaucrats, regulators, judiciary, and the politi politicians from all parties uh, who are there in Delhi. Um, and then with this sort of constructive dialogue, uh, this could be something where the entrepreneurs feel that, wow, this is a great place uh, to bring in a lot of capital. And we can use this as a lab 
to come up with solutions which could be scale to become uh, be solutions for the world so uh, the uh, government and this consulting firm would act like uh, entities to resolve stakeholder conflicts and things like that uh, so and if it's ready to remove all kinds of roadblocks including corruption so that this firm does not have any problems uh, then it can uh, work wonders and this pmu can act as a single a window for coordination so the role of the pmu would be to attract solution pro providers uh, build a multipartisan consensus among the bureaucrats judiciary regulators and politicians have two way communication with the residents and have reporting on what we are calling measurable time bound real outcomes now the formal bid documents could be issued through gem which is the government e marketplace and it could be uh, done in a fairly quick way and uh, what is interesting in this is uh, that uh, you know the basic thing will be first that there is an outcome section so it basically puts the ball in the court of the bidders and says how does your firm plan to make mission 25 a success what does success mean to you in the union territory of delhi in terms of gdp jobs environment what dedicated resources will your firm put into this project what are your asks from the delhi government how will you attract capital and ensure real outcomes identify the critical areas for the city and give us each of your high level solution plans what is your involvement plan to enable the city to reap frog what technology tools will you use so these are some of the things to give them uh, guidelines on how they can uh make a wow outcomes kind of presentation based on which some of the forms the uh, firms which want to bid will be shortlisted uh then the next question is the outlays so how are you going to uh, so uh, how are you going to get paid so here uh uh the preference is for a simple simple clear contract that's fair to both parties and uh, you they could use some of the definitions here so for instance tr is the threshold revenue and it's the revenue earned by the union territory in uh, 2019 20 cap is the cap on the annual fee that will be paid to the pmu firm uh, min is the minimum payment that will be paid and pr is the percentage of revenue above the threshold that will be paid to the pmu firm so for instance if the current revenue uh, gdp of the city of delhi is say 50 billion dollars and they wanted to grow to 100 billion dollars uh, by 2025 so a percentage of that revenue growth uh, will be paid to the consulting firm uh, now obviously there's got to be a cap on that because if the this whole happens or the percentage has to be extremely low so it's better to have a little bit of a higher percentage and a cap uh, on uh, this kind of stuff so this is a, a rough template that could be used uh, to get this thing uh, going so let's just get back to the uh, presentation so we've covered uh, about me and the bhagavad gita the ccdi uh, the mbsm travelers the mission 25 delhi so let's move on to the india for prosperity movement now what we are saying is that in, to some extent uh you know india has um, uh, lagged behind in prosperity and probably and by prosperity we mean contentment health and adequate wealth for all its citizens uh so uh, why is that and one of the possibilities is that uh even though india got uh, freedom from the british in 1947 uh the Uh, british rulers was replaced by another set of rulers who call themselves public servants but really do not act like public servants but act more like rulers and the uh, uh, citizens uh, act like uh, praja or people who are being ruled uh, rather than free to citizens in a, a vibrant democracy so uh now can this change and if the youth get together and uh, you know demand prosperity so uh, we've had movements like india against corruption india against rape uh, and india against so many things but 
can it be something like a positive movement, like India for prosperity? So how does this movement come to place? How do, do many uh, chapters spring up all over the area? Can this become the largest uh, vote bank uh, with a lot of uh, youth and a lot of other people who want prosperity? And uh, say that, look, uh, you know, if you are standing for election, if you want to be a leader, then tell us your prosperity plan. Uh, and if you don't have a prosperity plan, we are not going to vote for you um, and things like that. So uh, if this movement uh, could be a leaderless movement, uh, like, uh, you know, something like Bitcoin or um, uh, something like Wikipedia or something like Al Alcoholics Anonymous. So how can this happen? So these are some of the things that if we get critical mass in the Slack group, uh, we can talk about, and we can definitely demand prosperity from our leaders in a nice way, not with real roko, rasta roko, violence, this, that, the other, but uh, not by blaming them, but trying to inspire them to provide us prosperity. Uh, thank you very much uh, for listening to me.